good afternoon. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. I haven't even got started yet. Good evening, I'm Chris Baber. Welcome to a Sparks Live English Heritage Special. You're in for a real treat tonight. We've got some summer cocktails, a bit of booze, some homemade scones with a boozy clotted cream and jam. And we're gonna have a look at a visit I made to the Isle of Wight a couple of weeks ago to one of m and partners, an English heritage site, Queen Victoria's holiday home, Osborne. So over to me on the Isle of Wight. Hi, I'm Chris Baber. I'm here on the Isle of Wight at Queen Victoria's Holiday Home and I'm going to give you at home a sneak peek at some of the royal treasures that can be found here and I've got an exclusive interview with English heritage historian Dr Andrew Han, who's going to give us a real insight into the history that has happened here. Before we get started, competition time. Ten lucky viewers at home have the chance to win a family annual membership to English heritage that gives you access to over 400 sites over a 12 month period and all you need to do is let us know which Jubilee are we celebrating in 2022 and we've got loads of clues coming up throughout tonight's show so stay tuned for that and get your answer emailed over to sparkslive at marksandspencer.com before the close of tonight's show and without further ado welcome to Queen Victoria's holiday home Osborne So first things first, I'm off to speak to Dr. Andrew Han. Now, when it comes to English heritage, he is the man I want to talk to, and we're gonna discuss this house in Queen Victoria. I can't wait to find out more. Hey, good to Hi, see Andrew. you. So Andrew, for any m and customers that aren't aware, what is English heritage all about? Well, we're all about bringing history to life, and it's, you know, we, we, we talk about step into England's story. You know, with our 420 sites, it's a chance to look at all the different periods of England's history. Okay. And tell me about your role in English Heritage. Well, I'm the, uh, the head of the historians team at English Heritage. There's eight of us, and we are responsible for all these 420 sites and doing the historical research, writing up the interpretation, which goes up on sites and online, and in all our other publications. Can you tell me a little bit more about what your role entails? Well, I mean, I will go out and I'll look at various sites, see what research, we, what we already know about the sites, and then I'll have to go and look in the archives. I'll go and do some, I'll commission some research, you know, some building research, um, basically so that we can find out more about those, the, the particular features of those sites, so that then we can produce content in terms of writing interpretation panels, producing films and writing guidebooks and uh, in, in material for the website. So it's, it's quite a varied workload, really. Oh, fascinating. Can you tell me a little bit more about one of these stories? Well, one of the projects I worked on was looking at Queen Victoria and Prince Albert's birthdays, which they always spent their birthday at, at Osborne. And we, and we looked through Queen Victoria's journal and we found lots of uh, images of uh, the, the present tables that they had on their birthdays. And we went around the house find, spotting all the different objects that were birthday presents they'd given to each other. So it was, it was a really fascinating project. And we were able then to sort of produce interpretation that actually highlighted these various presents around the house and also some commemorative trees in the garden as well. Fascinating. Andrew, did English Heritage do anything special to celebrate the 2022 Platinum Jubilee and what happened here at Osborne? Well, across the country we're doing sort of family fun days out linked to our historical monarchs from across the centuries. And here at Osborne we've been doing a, a focus on Queen Victoria, of course, and with a sort of fun day which involved lots of activities like Punch and Judy, circus tents, strongman, all those sort of things, you know, the sort of traditional Victorian seaside activities. Sounds like fun to me. We got involved in the lighting of Jubilee Beacons across the country with three of our sites at Porchester Castle uh, near Portsmouth, also at Pendennis Castle in Cornwall and at Carlisle Castle up in the north of England. My neck of the woods. We're also uh, getting involved in the Queen's Green Canopy Scheme, which is uh, planting, we're going to be planting 70 trees across the country, including one here at Osborne, which is a uh, cypress, which replaces an earlier Jubilee planting from Victoria's reign. Fantastic. Andrew, how can Sparks customers get involved with English Heritage? Well, we're really excited to be partnering up with m and Sparks to offer customers 50% off their entry to any of our English Heritage sites. Amazing. All Sparks customers need to do is to log on to the Sparks hub or check the newsletter to redeem their offer. Brilliant. 
you know, the first moment that I arrived at Osborne on, when I was doing a project here, which must have been, oh gosh, way back in 2008, I just walked up to the site and just looked up at the building and I thought, wow, this is amazing. And I just wanted to find out more about it. And that started me on a journey now of more than 10, 15 years nearly researching here. It's a fascinating place. Prince Albert, who designed the building here, when he saw the site, it reminded him of the Italian Riviera. And so he designed it in Italianate style because of that. He was just, you know, fascinated. And he loved Italy because he'd been, he spent time there in his youth. So he knew Italy really well. So, you know, he must have thought it was like coming to Italy in the, the south of England. Very nice. He designed the building himself, working with uh, Thomas Kubit, who was a, a builder, ra a master builder, rather than a rather than an architect. So he did a lot of the drawings himself. Basically, Albert stood on the top of the roof there, and he directed the positioning of all the different trees in the landscape there. He just wanted to get this looking exactly perfect. He knew exactly what he wanted, and, and he made sure that he designed it to perfection. You know, it was it was because the Queen was Queen. He needed a role. Basically, building and, and designing the site was was his, one of his big big passions. After Victoria died, the site was given to the nation by uh, Edward VII and they used part of the house as a convalescent home for military officers and that was called the King Edward VII Convalescent Home. And then the other bit, the, the pavilion there, was actually opened up to the public and the public could come round to view Victoria's residence from very early on, from sort of 1903, they were able to come in and have a look at the site. Honestly, I'm blown away with the gardens. This just looks incredibly Italian to me. Yeah, well, it's a fabulous pergola, isn't it? And we know it's been here since the, uh, the, the early years of Victoria and Albert being here because the Queen painted it. She did lots of little sketches of all different parts of the site. Even as the house was being built, she's sketching away of different bits of it. So, yeah, we, we know so much about it from all these little drawings that are in the Royal Collection. She's not a bad artist at all. Oh, can we see these pictures anywhere at English Heritage? Well, some of them down at, at the Swiss Cottage, actually, where we've got uh, a little exhibition there of a, a lot of the paintings by the children and by, by the Queen. It's, again, it's another thing that Albert designed, so, it, yeah, we, we should go down there now. Well, let's go and have a look. Welcome to the Swiss Cottage Garden. What a beautiful garden it is as well. I noticed this when I came in. What was this shed used for? Was it was built by the princes themselves and they used it to store all their miniature tools so they got like miniature wheelbarrows but also spades and shovels and they all had their initials on them so that they would know whose was whose. So the princess and princesses, the little kids were getting involved, they were getting stuck into the garden in here? They were, Prince Albert was very keen but they all learnt you know sort of natural life skills and things so he got them all to have a, an equal sized garden plot and so there's nine plots for the nine princes and princesses, you know, equal for the boys and girls, no, no distinction made there at all. And they grew fruit, vegetables and flowers in them. And would they go away and cook with that themselves? They would, yeah, they would go away and in, in the Swiss cottage, there's a little miniature kitchen and they prepared food in there, for, which they then served up to, to Victoria and Albert when they came down to visit. Oh wow, so Victoria and Albert would come to this very garden and eat the food grown here? They would indeed, yeah. And, and Albert also bought some of the produce off the, off the princes and princesses at market prices, so but he would teach them the value of money as well. Very generous of them, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know what he did with it then. Yeah. <laughs> what a great way to learn as well. And do you know anything about the food they were cooking in there? Um, we know that they were cooking things like uh, Schliemilch, which is like a, a, a German dessert, but also things like wafers and sponge cakes, whatever. They, they had all the sort of kit you would expect to find in the kitchen there. It's just sort of all miniaturised. I'll have to dig out a recipe. Yeah. What's this over here? It looks really interesting with the flagpole and the cannons. It's a miniature fort. It was actually built by the princes themselves with the help of their governor, Lieutenant Cowell, and it's based on a Crimean War era fort. So it's got, it's, you know, ac historically accurate to how it would be. And they've even got like miniature cannons there, which will fire with real gunpowder. So it's, they used to play with their toy soldiers on there and they had a little barracks there as well, which they built and made the bricks themselves. So it's, they even made the bricks themselves? They even made the bricks, yeah. They were cooking, they were making bricks, they were really hands-on, weren't they? They were, they certainly were. But it sounds like they were really also family-orientated, doing a lot with the family, eating with the family. They certainly were, yeah. Up at the cottage, they, they, they would prepare food in the kitchen and then it would go upstairs to the dining room and then they would set the table and, and serve Victoria and Albert and they'd come and have a meal down here. So. Oh, nice big family meal. Yeah, exactly. I tell you what, all this talk of food, I'm getting hungry. Do you fancy a bite to eat? Yeah, why not? I'm absolutely starving. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Andrew, look at that, what a spread. You can't beat an M&S picnic in the British summertime. 
before we dive in, I want to know a bit about what would a Victorian picnic entail? Well, it would have had quite a few of the things that you can see here, but there would have been a lot more meat. They, they, there might have been a whole joint of beef that, you know, you've got a carving knife to carve it. So, and lots of pies as well, like meat pies. You'd have like a pigeon pie or a game pie or something like that. And then for desserts, you'd have things like blancmange. So we presumably would have brought it in the, in the mould and then taken it out when they arrived. And things like uh, stewed fruit in pots that you would then pour out and eat with biscuits and uh, other things like apple turnover, other type of cakes. You would have cakes like the Victoria Sponge, of course, but you know, there'll, there'll be lots of lots and lots of food. It would have been a real spread. And you talk about a lot of meat. What, what's the reason behind that? You're talking earlier about whole joints of beef on a picnic. Yeah, well, it's because basically, if you're wealthy, you demonstrate that by the amount of meat you have because meat's more expensive than other, other things, particularly vegetables. So you've, you'd have very little in the way of like salad or vegetables, but lots and lots of meat. So, so a showcase of meat is a sign of wealth. Yeah, very well, much so. And would they have any alcohol? They would have brought wine with them, but they would also have had tea and you would have had probably a, a, an urn to keep the tea warm and then you know, the teapot to pour it out in because you know what's, what's better than, uh, than tea and cake in the afternoon? Well, I, I can't think of much better than that, but they must have had an entourage to carry the urns, joints of beef. It doesn't, it's not the sort of thing you can put in one of these M&S little hampers nowadays. Unfortunately not, no. I mean, like you would have had a, a series of attendants with you. We know that Victor and Albert had a load of attendants traveling with them because you didn't, you'd, you'd also be having all your China of plates or your or your knives and forks wow. maybe even table and chairs sometimes for a picnic yeah. it was it was you know it was a real like dining out of doors rather than uh, you know you're roughing it you certainly weren't roughing they it. really knew how to dine al fresco didn't they, they certainly did i think one thing that could have pepped it up a notch though would be this m&s british strawberry gin liqueur 20 percent there's some edible silver in there i mean great for the jubilee or just great all year round in my books. I like to mix that up with a little bit of Prosecco, even pure a little bit of strawberry, make a spin on a Bellini. Um, but I think we should probably pop a cork and enjoy a bit of food before we have a little look around. I certainly should. Sounds like a good idea to me. Ooh. Let's get in there. Ooh. Here we go. Well, what better way to celebrate a belated jubilee. Belated jubilee, yes. Yeah. Pour this up. Is a glass big enough for you? Oh, certainly big enough. <laughs> Not big enough for me after the day, I tell you that much. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I'm going to head on that. Hey, what a lovely view. It is absolutely fabulous, isn't it? I and mean, this is what first attracted Victoria and Albert to, to Osborne. They, they, they would come down on the Royal Train to Gosport and then they could just pop on the Royal Yacht and come over here and they'd be arrive unobserved. So they, you know, it was given the privacy they were looking for. I mean, Victoria used to love that beach alcove down here, where she would paint scenes of the sea. She was a really good artist. Uh, and the children would come down here too. I mean, they would just love playing on the beach. They'd come down with their governess. They could collect shells. They could dig in the sand, whatever. They also went out swimming. They had uh, Prince Albert created a floating bath for them, out, which was set out in the bay. They could row out to it and you know, do their swimming lessons out there so they could all be proficient swimmers like Albert himself. It was a, it was a lovely place for them to come. And you know, should we go and have a look down what's going over there? There seems to be some people playing here today. I'd love to. Let's go and find out more. Right then, what's going on here then? You just want to tell me you've never seen a Punch and Judy? You're having a laugh, aren't you? Yeah, I am actually. You are, yeah, you have <laughs> seen a Punch. You know it's Punch and Judy, yeah. don't you? you know, have you ever met Mr. I've Punch? I've never met Mr. Punch. You've never Punch. actually met Mr. Punch? Never. Would you like to miss me? Of course I would. I told you, I'll have to introduce him properly though. Okay. And you have to cheer a bit when he comes right. in. So I have to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in this case, young man. All right. Uh, let me introduce you a man who's entertained the message for over 400 years. It's Mr. Punch! Wait, 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 wait. Is that all I get? Yeah, I want just... louder than that. Well, Come well, on, well, well. try harder. Sorry, Mr. Punch. Do I try that again? Yeah, do I go again? All right. Go again. We'll sorry, do that again. Sorry, sorry. He's very fussy. He's a precious young yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this case, you're a young man. Uh, oh, let me introduce you a man that's entertained the masses for over 400 years. It's Mr. Punch! Yeah! 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 Happy now? Yeah, that's good for your ego. All right. Hello there. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm going to shake your hand. Oh, there you are. There you are. <laughs> nice to meet you, Punch. It's nice to meet you too. Uh, uh, what's your name then? My name's Chris. Ah, Chris. <laughs> like crisps. <laughs> uh, I want to know a bit about the history of Punch and Judy, I Punch guess. There was not about the history of Punch and Judy. Oh! comes from, from Italy, doesn't it, Mr. Punch? That's right, I'm yeah. from the Commedia dell'arte. Commedia dell'arte. <laughs> there you go, Commedia dell'arte. And if they were coffee? Coffee. Don't be mm. silly, no, 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 it's the art of theatre. Art of theatre. Art of theatre. Art of theatre. No, yeah, com comedy delight, at least. Art of theatre. It's yeah. Italian. 
And how long has it been, Punch and Judy, been a thing? Over 400 years, like I said in the introduction. Okay. Came to this country, 16... 16... 16 62, you idiot! Oh, what? I'm sorry, Mr Punch. 16, the 9th of May! 9th of May, 1662. It was written in somebody's... Who's, who's diary? Samuel Pete, you idiot! Yeah, Pete's oh, diary. You know, uh, Charles II, after the yeah. restoration, blah, 1662. He was in London, Mr, uh, Mr. Punch comes over, um, and he wasn't, wasn't like this. It was bigger. bigger. Much bigger. Much bigger. It was like human-sized puppets. Okay. Marionettes. All right. So, uh, and he had a big show. And Mr. Mr. Oh, Isaac Covent Garden, don't you know? Mm. Headliner! <laughs> <laughs> Headliner. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Peeps liked it, didn't he? He loved it. He said it was very pretty. Very pretty. There you go. I am very pretty, aren't I? <laughs> mm, can't answer that. You're looking well for 400. Thank you. Talking yeah. of pretty, Mr. Punch. Yes? You're not in there on your own, are you? Oh, no, no, no. I have with me my beautiful wife. She's the most beautiful woman in the whole wide world. Well, we're going to call her then. Oh, yes. Uh, would you like to, uh, to come up and meet you? Absolutely. All right, then. Uh, we'll all call. Here we go. Uh, Judy. I think it needs to be louder, Mr. Punch. Louder? Yeah, yeah, she's probably working down in the basement. Like all right, then, all right. Uh, Judy. Uh, louder, Mr. Punch. Should we join in? Oh, yeah, everyone. Oh, all oh, at the oh, same time. Here we go. One, two, 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 three. Judy! Hello. Who's <laughs> there? Oh, well, who do you think it is? It's a young man for you, Judy. Oh, a young man? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, I'm Here we go. Straight Here we go. up. Whoa. Oh, oh, she's even Hello. putting makeup on and everything. Oh, thanks Hello. for making the effort. I'm going to shake your hand. There we go. Oh, oh, nice to meet oh, you, Judy. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, you stay away, you. I've got a stick down here. <laughs> I better watch yourself then. Yeah. Oh, you better do, yeah. yeah. Oh, Mr. Budge, it's lovely to be here again. Oh, and who is this uh, handsome young man? Well, who is this handsome young man? My name's Chris. My name's Chris. Oh, oh, hello, Chris. Yeah, I'm a chef. A chef. Oh, dearie me. Oh, you could make me some dinner. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, Abby, I'm really hungry. I'm always hungry. I'm so hungry, I'm going to die. What do you like to eat? What's your favourite food? Oh, oh, I think he's dead. Oh, he's, he's dead, dead now. Dead. Yeah. He's dead. Uh, uh, Mr. Punch, are you really dead? Do you think he's dead? Yeah. No, 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 no I don't, look, watch this, watch this, this usually works, look, 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 <laughs> what did you do that for, you almost killed me, because you were pretending, you silly man, but look, we've got a show to do, stop messing around, he asked you a question, what do you like to eat, oh, uh, I, I like, uh, um, I like sausages, oh, very nice, sausages, you always liked sausages, didn't you, oh, I yeah. like my sausages, he does like sausages, <laughs> he has a trouble keeping his sausages, though, Oh yeah, yeah. I, I always yeah. get they always get stolen from me. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to get me sausages? Uh, Judy, yeah, get... can you get me sausages? Uh, one moment. Bye bye, everyone. Bye, Judy. Oh, bye. Say goodbye. Oh, bye, bye, Judy. Oh, bye. I love me sausages. You won't wait and see my lovely sausages. Yeah. Here you go. Oh. <laughs> I want to know. You know, yeah. you, you told me initially they were life size. Yeah. How come they've shrunk down within the wash? What's happened here? <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's Judy's fault. She's always washing them on the washing line. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. That's not true. You know it's not. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, oh no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, so, so the booth was it got smaller because the, yeah. the, the, the original show was quite expensive to go and see. All right. And then in the Victorian times, it became popular uh, down at the seaside because uh, the invention of the railways, yeah. uh, people were travelling outside of the cities and going to the seaside. Okay. All right. They wanted some entertainment. All right. And the Mr. Punch got smaller because you could fit him in a nice travelling booth. And not only that, but I could grab a stick. <laughs> you can grab a, if marionettes can't yeah. grab a stick. All right. They can just do stuff. Of course. If he grabs a stick, his character... Yeah. originally was a nasty piece of work but he's he, basically he, he can grab a stick now he can do stuff yeah it's a hand puppet as opposed to being a marionette yeah all right and it made it easier to travel and do stuff and move about on the beaches and the different different seaside resorts that yeah. became popular like brighton and scarborough and all the others as they, those places went out and uh, have you got a stick mr mr i have got a stick i'll go down go and, and get, get a stick, stick. all right go and get a stick and was it just a daytime event this uh well no because they had them at night time as well where quite... hello there it's a crocodile. He's after the sausages. Yeah. Oh, did oh. I just see a crocodile? Uh, 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 yes, Mr. Punch. Was, I think he was trying to get your sausages. Was he indeed? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, where did he go? Uh, he, he, he disappeared. I don't know, he disappeared. Is yeah. he over here, is he? No. No, no he's behind you, Mr. Punch. What's that? Behind yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, what? No. Over here, is he? No, he was over there. No, he's behind you again. What? Mr. what? Where, where, where is he? Where is he? I don't, I don't know where he is. No, he's behind you, Mr. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
But that's all you dropped your sausage. Yeah, you dropped your sausages, Mr. Punch. There you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> So no, it wasn't always the daytime thing. Okay. Originally, it wasn't for children either. All right. Yeah. It was it was for adults, as, as you can probably tell. The show just kept rolling and rolling and rolling, and they did it on night corner, on the corners, yeah. of the street corners, when when pubs were kicking out in cities. All right. So people would come along and they'd laugh. Yeah. And the barker or the bottler would have a bottle, and the money would be popped into there as people were laughing and having fun. All right. And they were a little bit drunk, and uh, people would put money in, and that's how we make them. So it was a busk. It was a continuous busk, and the show went on and on and on and on until it was time to pick up and go. And that's how you got the name bottler. Because you'd use a bottle to collect the money. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not because he runs away all the time. <laughs> do you run away all the time? When he's trying to hit yeah, you, I, I bet do. you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. And it was also my job to make sure that he's protected as well. Okay. Right. So, yeah, Punch and Judy, been going a very long time. Yeah. Now it's a smaller thing. Not quite as many people mm. do it as, as a thing, but it's still very popular and the kids still love it. Because yeah. Punch, as I said, he's a child. I'm a big child. I he's love a being a child. He's, I he's, can do what I like. Hey, hey. He's, he's really the child, and Judy's the mum. And that's why the children appreciate him. Got it. And that's what it's all about. They Fantastic. all love me. You all love me, don't you, girls and boys? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> well, I think it's time for you to go, Mr. Punch. Lovely to see you all. Good to see you. Say nice bye to meet bye you. Bye girls and boys. Bye bye, Mr. Punch. Bye bye, Mr. Punch. Bye bye. Bye bye, Mr. Punch. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for right. care. Enjoy your day on the street. Oh, I will do. All right. See you soon. Cheers, mate. All right. What an amazing day. Some great history, some lovely people, and a nice bit of food. Mm. Back to me in the studio. What a trip to the Isle of Wight that was. I hope you're feeling inspired to go and visit um, Osborne, Queen Victoria's holiday house for yourself. What an amazing place to go. Now, without further ado, special guest. I've been promised a lot of theatre, juggling, everything tonight. Jenny Ree, welcome. Jenny. Thank you, Chris. I'm not sure about the juggling, but you know, after a few drinks, who knows? Well, let's see what happens. But for everyone watching, what is your role at MS as an inside MS specialist? So I'm a, basically a product developer and I look after spirits and cocktails. It's a hard job, but someone's got to do it. Um, and that's from concept, so initial idea right through to launch onto the shelf for our lovely customers to buy and enjoy. And you've got one of your lovely products with you tonight. Yep. So this is a new one that came out back in April. This is our British strawberry gin liqueur. Mm. Summer in a glass. Well, I can't wait to try it. Before yeah. that, competition. You've got a couple of minutes left and then competition is closed and the winners will be announced tonight. Little reminder on the screen there for you now about how to enter. Okay, a bit of bacon. Do you do any bacon at home? Yeah, not enough. Not but enough? Yeah. Well, we're going to do scones today. You know, we think you've got your strawberry gin liqueur. I'm thinking homemade scones. I mean, M&S, best scones obviously on the high street, but there's something about making it yourself and the smell yeah. that you get. And it's roasting in here, isn't it, with this oven on today? <laughs> I mean, that's the thing you don't get when you buy a nice one from the shop. But uh, either way, homemade scones, clotted cream with a gin twist and some jam. So we'll get straight onto it. And for everyone at home, if you've got any questions that you want to ask Jenny, now is your chance to do so. All your M&S product questions. Uh, but I'm going to get started. How, how long have you been working with M&S then? Gosh, I actually hit my 25 years in March this okay. year. So, um, yeah, I came basically from university, was at uni in, up, uh, up in Sheffield, did a year placement, uh, went back to uni and then came back and I never left. Okay. So, uh, yeah, 25 years. Oh, wow. What a story. What too a... young, was that? Was that too young? Too, yeah, it was. Um, right, before I get started, actually, I want to get the sort of name of the dish we're doing, which is the scones tonight, up on the screen. And then we'll run through everything for you so we can get our ingredients up. I'll have a run through them. So we've got some self-raising flour, some bacon powder, some golden caster sugar or regular caster sugar if you don't have the golden, uh, some butter, make sure it's cold, some milk. I've gone for the creamy whole milk because it tastes good. And we've got an egg, some clotted cream, obviously that amazing gin liqueur, some red diamond strawberries and some jam. And then the equipment that you're going to need, I mean, it's all pretty basic, doing scones, nice place to start. Uh, Greaseproof paper, baking tray, large bowl, a couple of smaller bowls, a jug, a dough cutter, and a pastry brush. And this is the method for you now. If you are following along at home, I'll be going quite slowly with this. But now's a good chance. If you want to get your phone out, take a picture of the screen. If you want it to hand or screenshot on the laptop, if you can do that, have a little read through, and then we will get started. 
So, yeah, let's get going. So, 25 years at MNES. Yeah. Right. It's actually flown, absolutely flown. flown. What's been the number one product that you've... This is self-raising flower gun in there, by the way. What's the number one product that you've ever developed or... Um, we launched some gin globes at Christmas yeah. and they were really popular with our customers. So that was really fun. And, never, you, you know, you have this idea about putting glitter into a bottle yeah. and you have this idea and then you think it's a bit pie in the sky and then actually seeing it delivered is unbelievable. And honestly, we did it one of the productions in lockdown. Yeah. So I remember being on a Teams chat Watching it on a video, it was being produced in France. Just a touch of baking powder. Just a bit. Yeah. And uh, it was just amazing to see it, you know, just seeing your little baby go down the line. Mm. I guess the nice thing now with social media is you get that immediate response. You oh, can yeah. see everyone sharing it, talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's nothing, Chris, like when you know you launch a new product, yeah. you're so close to it, you've seen it loads, and then you put it on the shelf. And my other half gets a bit cross because we'll be in the store and uh, it'll be it'll like, come on, Jenny, let's do the shopping. And I just love watching people shop and pick it up for Picking the first time. It just gives you a real buzz. I bet it does. Uh, sugar going in. That's golden caster sugar. You can just use regular sugar if that's what you've got. And then in with our butter. This is cold because we don't want it to all just melt to nothing. And then we just rub it with our fingertips to a breadcrumb. Now, my mum always used to say to me, cold hands for scones. Cold hands. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. I mean, when you're handling, you know, you've taken the butter out of the fridge. The hotter your hands are, well, if you're in a room this hot, it's hard <laughs> to have cold hands, but yeah, keep them cool. So a lot of pastry kitchens and stuff, they're all sort of chilled because yeah, yeah. uh, you're dealing with products like that. What are you working on at the minute? How, when did you actually make this? And so we're probably working a year in advance. Yeah. So often I have no idea what season I'm in because we're okay. working so far in advance. So Christmas is obviously almost put to bed. Yeah. And by the time Christmas launches, I feel like we've already done it. Do you know what I mean? Because you're always yeah. working ahead. Can you believe it? We started Christmas 23 already. 23? Yeah. I always have to check the year we're in. It's a bit odd. Yeah. Like. I mean, there's certain stuff you're not allowed to talk about. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, You, you yeah. must be on, like, you know, NDAs we, and all of that. We sure yeah. are. So, yeah. you know, we want to protect the magic. So we yeah. want to create new things and give reasons to come, people to come to us to buy them. And we yeah. want to make them really special um, and unique. And we have to protect that. And, you know... If I'm honest, there's loads of people out there making different things and we yeah. want to make something really, really special and protect it for ourselves. Yeah, but, and what are the questions, like if you go to a dinner party, what do most people want to know? What do you get asked the most? People hate when I go around to the house because they're like, oh God, what, Jenny's here, yeah. you know, is this okay to drink? I'm like, of course it is, you know, I'm not snobby or anything about what I drink. Yeah. Um, they always say, gosh, you have a really hard do job, don't yeah. you, Jenny? Um, and obviously, do I swallow a spit? Well, what is the answer to that? Well, it's obvious. So there's days, yeah. Chris, where I'm tasting spirits and I can have a whole table worth. No, yeah. literally about a dozen, 15 spirits. If I tasted that and didn't spit it out, I would be on the floor and my day would be so long. You should do them, on, do them on a Friday. You go straight out into <laughs> London afterwards, couldn't you? But you've got to be fair on the product as yeah. well. You want to be, you know, if you're tasting 30 different liquids, you've got to be as fair on the end one as the first yeah, one. Yeah, by the time you get the end, they're all going to taste great, aren't exactly, they? That's the thing. Exactly, exactly. And um, lots of water to drink, obviously. Lots of water. So there, that, that's just in your well, breadcrumb consistency. Really fine. Yeah, really fine. Fine breadcrumbs. And then milk, in we go. And, you know, just get in there with your hands. Add a little bit, because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this, we've had the Christmas editions. Yeah. So various flavours of this gin liqueur. The, the reason why I really like the strawberry gin liqueur, it is really summery in a glass. Mm. So, when you, we, shall I pour a little bit? Yeah, let's try a bit. Can you multitask? I can try my best. <laughs> the nice thing is this sold really well for the Jubilee, but for me, it's a really summery drink. Yeah, you um, know, Wimbledon's not far away, yeah. picnics in the park. Yeah. And what I love about it is, you know, it's so versatile. I hadn't even thought about introducing it into a scone until yeah. obviously we'd spoke. Um, it's great on the rocks. Okay. But just smell that, Chris. Yeah. Competition now closed, everyone. So. Cheers to the competition cheers. being closed. Cheers. And if you didn't have a cheers and a little drink, why not? <laughs> but just smell that really fresh strawberry. It's like you've it's, literally got those strawberries and just squeeze like, them. Dare you say it, a strawberry. It doesn't smell alcohol. Like it, you can smell the alcohol, but it doesn't just smell like a spirit, does it? It yeah, smells it's, fresh. And it's a gin liqueur, so it's 20% mm. alcohol level. So you, it's got to be 37.5% to be a straight gin. Yeah. And it's slightly sweeter with the sugar, so it's a liqueur. Okay. Um, but just great sipped. But also with tonic water, mm. Also topped up. I put a little bit in the bottom of a, a, a flute. Yeah. You put your gin liqueur at the bottom and then top it up with anything. You know, it could okay. be some English sparkling. It could be some Prosecco carver. But, you know, it's a great um, drink to serve at a party as well. Yeah, for sure. 
And what other drinks do you work on? You've got this strawberry. So we've got this, we have cocktails. So things like our cocktail cans, we've launched a couple of those this summer. We, again, yeah, strawberry, really well, strawberry they? daiquiri has done really, really well. I mean, well. they're really popular. So you see everyone on the train with M&S can, don't you? Because <laughs> what a way to pass the train journey. Yeah, we have a big market share in that and we've kind of really built that. I mean, we've been selling those for years. Yeah. Um, but we have like two measures, 8%, two measures in each can, which we're kind of renowned for. Yeah. And um, yeah, and just really popular. People dr drink them on the train, but also in parks and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. If you've gone on a picnic, I mean, it's the in ultimate the thing, isn't it? That we've rolled that up, so that's come together. I feel like I'm, you're doing all the work, Chris, but oh, I'm, I'm really happy with that. I mean, there's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not that much to do. They're really simple to make. Uh, then you're just, making it look very simple. You could rest that for 20 minutes or so if, if you don't you're have at home. to. You don't have to, but I just think it lets the sort of gluten and stuff relax. Okay. If you're at home, let it rest. It's only 20 minutes. And then just get yourself a rolling pin. Start to roll that out. Mm -hmm. What do you like to bake then or cook? What, what sort of food do you make? And is it just drinks that you work on at Marks So yeah, Spain? I have worked in uh, other areas. I've done biscuits. Gosh, that was a yeah. bit of a challenge. Lots of fat, lots of sugar, but really delicious. Yeah. Um, I've worked in juice and soft drinks, mm. uh, coffee, okay. tea. It's really varied. Um, but still, you know that buzz I talked about launching a new product? Yeah. It's really great. You know, when you see it on social media, seeing people... And what the great thing about social media is that you get everyone's response really quickly. Immediately, yeah. You know, so... Um, it's, it's like really... market research or focus groups. So that's like why when you do something a bit different, it gets yeah. everyone so excited, you know. But you've been, it's a bit strange because you've been working it for so long. Yeah. Everyone's like, you think like, hang on a minute, we've had, we've had this out for ages, but that's the first time they see it. You yeah. Know? Um, so yeah, but that's the challenge. What's new, what's exciting, what's next? So we're always aspiring to what's new and how we can, you know, do things differently. And do you just get like a brief given to you or is it like one day you might just have a, a brain so, yeah, so we'll create a, we'll create ideas for Christmas and say right we want yeah. to get after gin liqueur we want to do spirits mm. I'll write, then write a brief and brief it out to our suppliers yeah they'll all come in with tastings and um, yeah we play a bit of tennis they'll come in with a tasting we might make an amend they okay. go away tweak it um, and we've got suppliers all across the world so yeah. you know I've got one supplier in France you know literally UK based you get to travel a lot before Covid yeah it's hard to remember what life was what like life before, was COVID, like before yeah. COVID, yeah. And it's really, really good going to the suppliers, seeing it, and the actual production from literally source right through to the bottling line. Yeah. I still stand at a bottling line now, literally like... Just love you know, it. <laughs> you can't ever get bored of it. No, I bet you can't. Right, right have you got a job for me? Uh, yeah, we have. We're going to egg glaze these. So I rolled them out. Am yeah. I allowed to do this? Yeah. Am you, I going to mess it up? No, no, no. You can't okay. mess this up. So... We had a question come in saying, how do you get them to rise properly? So oh. I think having a sharp cutter is the key. So yeah. if you go straight down, don't go twisting it. Mm -hmm. If you take it off straight, it will generally... I do twist it, you know. So you're twisting the outside of the dough and that can cause it uh, to sort of... Um, top tip. Top tip. So, you know, I roll them out a centimetre, two centimetres. If you want a bigger scone, leave them a bit thicker. Just take another minute or so to bake. Okay, then bit of that on the top. And also in terms of the scones rising, just on the top, if you go on the sides, I think that... What, the, with a wash? Yeah, on the side, I think that can I've never stop done that before. Eyes. Yeah, so just on the top when you're doing that. I mean, you can add a bit of fruit I'm going to be this. making scones all weekend now, you know? Yeah, just, you, you know, that could be your next product, a, a flavoured, <laughs> a boozy scone. Well, I guess we're kind of doing one tonight. OK. Hopefully this is to your standard. Oh, it looks perfect to me. And then there you go. And then these go in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes in a nice hot oven. That's at 220. We're gonna, they don't take long at all. They're going to rise up. Um, but you could leave them like that, put them in later, get them ready in advance if you've got people coming round. In Can't wait go. for the smell. Well, that's one of the best bits, isn't it? That smell. Of and just that warmness when you put the cream mm. on and it melts a little bit. That's it. So talking of the cream, we've got a little sort of boozy twist. So clotted cream and jam i mean you can't have a scone without it really can you so be rude not to clotted cream get myself a bowl not the one that's had the flour in that wouldn't be the best and then i mean i could just go eat that out the tub oh i've been down to uh the dairy you know where they they make the cream and the milk and stuff and the sort of lush pastures that the the animals the cows are grazing on it really comes across in the flavor and I mean, that's why something so simple like strawberries and cream yeah. from M&S can taste so good because it's all about the quality, isn't it? Yep. So in we go. Give that a stir up. 
I love the colour as well, like really? that sort of off-white. Yeah. And then a splash of your... So how much? Uh, well, it depends how... How you there feeling? You go. It depends how the day's been, really. <laughs> um, all right, stir that through. Maybe added a little too much. No, no, no I think we're all good. Through, it's coming through. It's coming through. There you go. And then that's that. Ready, we can taste that later on. So that's ready to go. We've got a selection of jams, but now I think it's time for a little bit of little bit of booze, isn't it? So I had something in mind, you know, I've been drinking this on ice um, over the Jubilee weekend, but I think for anyone that's bought one, you've probably still got half the bottle or you might have absolutely none left. Depends how, depends how the weekend went. Depends how the weekend went. So I thought like a sort of spin on a Bellini, you know, mm -hmm. normally done with peach. We've just whizzed up some strawberries, so I'll show you how to do that. We've got these red diamond strawberries. Yeah. Um, I went up to Scotland and I've also been to somewhere in Surrey that grow these red diamond strawberries for Marks and Spencer. And I was, they are the best. They really are. I mean, you know, the, the size of them, the colour, the shape, yeah. the smell. smell. You is, can always tell by the smell. You've got to eat one, yeah, try them. And we went up to Scotland and I was thinking like, Scotland strawberries at first, you know, I would yep. never have associated, but you get the longer daylight. Are they going to be ripe, you know? Yeah, you get longer daylight hours, so effectively, you know. Literally melt in the mouth. Slightly cooler climate, they ripen slightly slower, so that gives them more time to develop more juice, mm. more sugar, more sweetness. And what I found fascinating is Lockie, the farmer, he's always on the quest of the ultimate strawberry, so he took me to like this breeding tent, yeah. where a bit like you're developing your products, getting it right, they're crossbreeding different strawberry plants with each other, and then they'll go, right, I like the sweetness of that one, and I like the shape of that one, and, and then, they'll make it in the middle, and they go, right, now we've got that, I like the acidity of that one, but with the size and sweetness, and it was, he said, it's this never-ending process and quest. He said, I'll never be like happy, or then, it's like magic, isn't why am I it, getting know? up in the morning? I always wanted to make it better, as amazing as they are. So, there we go. Strawberries in there. You don't need any sugar or anything in here because they're sweet enough already. There we go. Try not to get messy. Got me mega mixer here. There we go. I mean, you could use this in a jelly or something like that. And if you didn't have the mixer at home, Chris, could you just literally put it through a sieve or something? Or yeah, put it, it through a sieve. You could put them in a bowl and just use a fork. Or like a lot of people have got like a smoothie maker thing yeah. now, the Nutribullet. Give it a whiz up. And we're going to put the graphics up on the screen. So for anyone that wants to make this at home, let's have a little look at the name of the dish or the drink, should we say. Breezy Strawberry Bellini. Reese, good, good imagination with the name on that one. Um, and then let's get the ingredients. So 150 grams of M&S Speciality Red Diamond Strawberries. Leave some aside for the decoration. One bottle, so it says serves two. Um, you could probably get four or six out of this, to be honest, but maybe- we, Maybe we were just really thirsty yeah, we, tonight. We, we've done this one for ourselves. And then let's get the method up there as well, which is really quite simple. Whiz up your strawberries. They go into a glass and you're gonna need a sharp knife to chop your strawberries, your blender or your food processor. And then, you know how it is. Pour a bit of this in, top it up with a bit of fizz. Shall I do the honours? You do the honours. Yes, please. I'm looking forward to this. Look and at the colour of that as well. Oh, it's it great. amazing. And you can screenshot that on the screen now if you want to save it for later. There you go. Look at the colour. There we are. I'm glad I made some more of this because I think the crew got started on the other one I did earlier. Sure did. Ah, perfect. What, are we, what, what fizz have we got here? What have you so, brought along? Today we've got the Balfour Sparkling, which will go obviously very British theme here. Um, you know, it doesn't always have to be English. This does work really well, but yeah. it could be a Prosecco or any other sparkling wine that's your favourite tipple, really. Yeah, there's some fantastic sparkling wines in England now, though, isn't there? Gosh, yeah. There really we've just is. launched actually a new one, a Bramble Hill, which is um, absolutely delicious. Really citrusy, limey, mm. really good for parties again. Bramble Hill, do, they do an apple one as well, is that right? Uh, Where had, there's been a British apple M&S one. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. that's yeah. the one, really good. So what do you want to do? Do you want to... Go for it. Yeah, go on then. Splash of this in here. Uh, just a little, or a lot. Depends what you like. Need a spoon with that one. I've got a couple of, <laughs> got a whole strawberry in there. You're the winner. There we go. A bit of the puree in the bottom of there. So like have you that. added the gin already? No, there's no so gin in there. Yeah, top it up with there. a bit of gin. Ideally, you want to put that in the fridge because yep. you want a nice cold drink. Bit of gin. Be generous. I see. Why not? Well, you know. 
I'm looking forward to this. And any questions as well for Jenny, get them coming in. What M&S product do you want to know more about? That one. Yeah, getting a bit excited. <laughs> Maybe oh. I'll hold back on that one. There we are. Oh, thank you. Let's have a try of this. How else would you serve um, the strawberry liqueur then, if anyone? Do you know what? Left? One of my hey, cheers. Yeah, cheers. By the way, um, I'm a bit of a funny one about tonic. Mm. When I'm having a gin, I really like the gin to sing in the glass, and I have a plain tonic. But I then tried our new strawberry and rhubarb tonic, mm. and I added that to the strawberry liqueur, yeah. and it really jumps out the glass. Mm. And it just you get that lovely tanginess from the rhubarb yeah. as well. So a perfect pair, definitely. Yeah. Strawberry and rhubarb, I mean, st strawberry and rhubarb yeah. uh, tonic, which is also a light version to go with that, works really, really well. It's like the ultimate summer gin and tonic. And you could put some bits of fruit and stuff in there as well, couldn't you? But that, that oh. summer in a glass. Sat in the garden. Mm. Scones. Scones. Gosh, couldn't get better than that. No, you, you don't. I mean, that is really nice. I think it will just serve two tonight as well, won't it? <laughs> mm. Really nice. Oh. In terms of Christmas products, yeah. What have you been most proud of? Because I think M&S Christmas, everyone holds so many memories about that. What's your favourite M&S Christmas product? Not of all time, but the one what you've I personally done. Yeah, what do you or what I've home? made or what I've eaten? Let's go both. for both, yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, so my other half has gone to vegetarian and we had, I had the turkey legs. And yeah. I'm a bit, mm, you know, turkey leg, it's not the whole thing. It's not the whole deal. Yeah. I feel like I'm being a bit of a con artist. Mm. They were absolutely amazing. Okay. Really good, really succulent. Yeah and was just delicious. Uh, favorite product that I've launched at Christmas, it has to be the globe because yeah. it just went crazy. Crazy, yeah. And we, then when we added the lights underneath it as yeah. well, just went really well. So crazy, a few of the other people wanted to have a go at making it, didn't they? On the, on yeah, there was a few others. A few, to compliment them. Of course. Uh, but that's the, a day in the life of you is talking about Christmas in the middle of the year, isn't it? Yeah. It's, you're always out of season. Being well, it's funny, Chris, because in January, everyone's yeah. on, you know, dry January. Oh, mm. are you doing dry January, yeah. January, and Jenny even? And I'm like, no, it's my biggest tasting yeah. month of the year. So, you know, we do a load of tasting for Christmas yeah. in January. Dry January, not in my... Not happening. Not happening. <laughs> Dry gin January, perhaps, for you. Right, how's these scones oh, getting on? I can smell them. They're rising up nicely. Um, yeah, they are. They're coming up. And then we've got some here that I made earlier. So let's start to plate a few up. Mm. And literally 10 or 12 minutes on your scones. Scones or scones? Scone. Scone. Mm. I'm a northerner. I'm a scone though, is that not the northern? I don't know. Let's get you a good one. <laughs> so that batch that you made, how yeah. many scones would you make out for that? Um, it depends how thin you roll it, but probably about eight you're going to get out of there. So it's really simple recipe, just to either double it up yeah, yeah, yeah. or chop it in half, you know, not chop it in half. Reduce <laughs> the volume of the ingredients by mean. half. I know what you meant. Yeah, bit of that. And then the big question oh. is jam first or cream first? don't really it? care because it still tastes the same. I think that's probably the best answer I've ever heard that. <laughs> Do you know what? I don't care. Tastes the same. I think they call it the Devon Scrum. They just put the lid on top and oh, okay. eat it as it is. And then you know you said you had different jams. It's yeah. got to be strawberry, hasn't it? Or would you put raspberry with it? Or I like strawberry myself. Oh, yeah, I'm a bit of a traditionalist in that way. I think we were quite boozy. That's gone quite runny, but we're going to go with it. Why <laughs> we're gonna not? We're going to get messy. We're going to get messy. All right, on we go. See, I like cream first. Do you? Because it's all about the gram now, isn't it? And I think the cream with the red jam on top. <laughs> what do you think at home? Write in the comments. Cream them jam, jam them cream. Like I say, it doesn't really make a difference. And then I know some people are not drinking at the moment for various reasons. Yeah. Um, but there's lots of different things you could do. You could actually use that puree, couldn't you? And yeah. add some like, we sell a strawberry and elderflower presse. That mm. would work really, really well with it. Do you know what? That puree with just some sparkling water would work yeah, really I've well. Yeah, I've done that. Or even just the strawberries in a big blender, put yeah. a ton of ice in there Ooh. and just whiz it up and you've got like a fresh strawberry slushy, yeah. uh, which is really nice. Or even milk to do a milkshake, yeah. which is a good one for the kids. Yeah. Mm, strawberry jam. Always got some of that in the fridge. I've been looking forward to this jam. all day. Yeah. I mean, what well, tennis is coming up as well. So if anyone's got any plans for yep. tennis this summer, here's your drink. It just look at that. It looks amazing. Yeah. I'll tell you what I have forgotten to do. I mean, strawberry on the glass. Come on. What am I thinking? What joint have you taken me to? Yeah, there you go. Fantastic. We can charge more money for that now, <laughs> can't we? There you go. Get me one with a bit of green on. But this is like really simple. All right, let's do both sides like that. And before we eat them, I will get our scones out the oven because that's how quick it is to make. But this is like a really nice classic, but with a twist, you know? Yeah, it's it just of... is a classic. 
But sometimes you can't go wrong with a classic, no, I can love you? A classic. You know, there's so many technical recipes and stuff out there, but just learn and bake your own scones. Simple. And it's a real show off thing. If you present that, yeah. your friends will be like, what, you've made these? There you go, a little bit of that. Let's have a look at what we've got in the oven here. They're rising up nicely. Please dive in. Am I allowed to? Yeah, of course you are. All right. I'm just going to lift these off the tray. So these are the ones mm. that we've just taken out. Mm. I didn't think clotted cream could get any better. Oh. But with gin in there, well, gin liqueur in there. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. I'm going to need a lie down after this. Oh. It doesn't taste like alcoholic. Mm -hmm. You just get a sense there's something extra in there, don't you? It's a juniper a bit. It just kind oh. of lifts it a bit. Wow. Mm. That is a good scone, that, isn't mm. it? Well, cheers to that. Well done, Chris. Oh, no, thank you. And um, also, for all of our MS customers, 50% off entry to English Heritage sites using the code that's in the chat now. Mm -hmm. And I think the Isle of Wight trip I had, have you been before the Isle I've of not, Wight? No, it looked amazing. It's incredible there. Lovely place to visit. Spend the day there, get down on the beaches. But I think they've got over 400 sites English Heritage in the UK, so it's well worth a trip out this summer yeah. if you're doing a staycation. Maybe you could take a bit of this, have a little bit of a picnic, oh. bake some scones, take it along. But Amazing. competition winners, it's all closed. They're going to be up on the screen now. There you go. Anne, Hilary, Susan, Alex, Jane, Claire, Mandy, Cheryl, Elna. Well done. And you will... You'll, they'll all be getting an email with the details of how to sort of gather your prize. And on that note, join us again next time. And cheers. cheers. Thanks for coming along. It's been very pleasurable. Thank oh, you. I'm going back in for a bit more scone. Yeah, I think I will too. See you later, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm.